Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Hey, everybody. It's so good to have you join us today. And today we are talking about the lovable, the comical, the ever adorable pug. Oh, yeah. The dog we all remember from Men in Black. Yeah. Incredible dog. Yeah, uh, I had forgotten a, about that. But those expressions, that expressive face, that was awesome. Yeah. So we have a great interview today w- uh, with uh, someone we met out when we were doing a book signing back in the fall. So um, Megan, tell us a little bit about uh, Nina and her two babies. Yeah. So Nina has Philomena and Penelope, otherwise known as Phil and Penny. And if you follow them on Instagram, you probably already know quite a lot about them. Um, they are fantastic. And we, we had a good interview. Like Michael said, we were at an event in the fall, same event where we interviewed the standard poodle and they were doing a walk for charity. So it was a, it was a great event and we met some awesome dog parents. We sure did. We sure did. And so we want to jump right into that interview, but I do want to ask the question of the day and put it down in your, in the comments, what type of dog do you have? So we want to hear back from you. So, so tell us in the comments. And I have one question before we get started. Okay. Do you know what a group of pugs is called? I do not. Okay. Well, you know what? We will answer that question and more after the interview with Nina, Philomena, and Penelope. Enjoy. All right. So we are here with Nina, Philomena, and Penelope, and we are talking pugs today, and they are just precious. I can't get enough of their little faces and how quiet they are. (laughs) So let's talk about owning a pug. So what are some of the things people should know if they decide that a pug is something that they would like to get for their family? (laughs) They should definitely be prepared to have the pug follow you everywhere. Pugs, they call them Velcro pugs. They will follow you from room to room. Um, They do have a little bit different needs in terms of cleaning and stuff. You have to clean out their wrinkles because they can get food or debris in there and it can get infected if you don't. Um, And they have actually wrinkles here, here, and some on the butt too, which most people don't know. So uh, if you don't, they can get yeast infections. Um, And is that like a daily cleaning? uh, uh, We usually do it twice a day after the meals um, because food can get in there depending on the bowl. other than that, they are just lovable. They're little zany dogs. They're very fun, and they just love affection. And some of them are a little food craze, like Philomena here. <laughs> she likes her treats. Yeah, she loves cookies. <laughs> now, I already can tell that they're not vocal like my dogs are vocal, but she does talk to you. She does, yeah. So you could say, like, do you want to go outside? Are you hungry? <laughs> are you thirsty? And she'll go, yep, yep. <laughs> she has to go outside, which is pretty funny, but she's uh, pretty sassy, so she'll let you know when she wants something. Um, Penelope's quieter, so yeah. she's not quite as, doesn't have as much attitude as this one. <laughs> but it's not a loud bark, right? No, they actually, um, one of our trainers told us that pugs have a different kind of voice box, so okay. that's why their bark sounds different than other breeds. Okay. It's more of like, a, we call it a yarp, like it's, it's yeah. very... Uh, it's not deep like other dogs. Yeah, and it's not not excessive, right? No. Okay. And um, do they shed? That's a big question <laughs> for all dog owners. And what I found online for my breed was not accurate. So let's let's find out for real. Pugs shed a lot. Okay. So that's another thing you should know if you want to get a pug is they shed a lot. Um, you'll need to brush. We brush her like this time of year. The other they have a double coat. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. You we run the Roomba it. every day, <laughs> and you brush every day if we can, and okay. it's still, and definitely get a lint roller. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have one <laughs> in my purse right now, yeah. <laughs> and what are some things that you need to know about them? I know in the heat and the humidity, you have to be careful with dogs that have a shorter snout. Yeah, so the, the, they can't cool themselves off the way other dogs can, so you have to be really careful when the air quality is bad, just like if you have asthma, you know, like for humans, you wouldn't want to bring them outside. So we just go outside and come back in. We do our playing and exercise inside. Okay. Luckily, it's beautiful today, and yes. it's kind of cooled off. Otherwise, we would be limiting our time outside, yeah, especially sure. here in the south. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything else in terms of their temperament? I know you have two, and 
are, is it, are they pretty similar in temperament or uh, generally is there sort of, you know, highly active or low level of activity? We have a lot of pug friends and it seems to vary. I mean, they kind of match your activity and now that they have each other, they play a lot, but they're, they like to sleep. Pugs like to sleep. Yeah. So they'll play for a good stretch, but they're not dogs that need to be taken on three mile walks. You know, we try to take her for a walk. She'll be like, nope, I'm done. Take me inside so I can nap. Right? So if you're a couch potato, this would be a good dog for you? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, and tell us, so Penny is new to the family. Yes. And she's a rescue. Uh, she's not a rescue. Okay. We adopted her from a breeder. Oh, okay. So she had two or three litters. She just had her last litter um, the end of August. Okay. So they retired her and then put her up for adoption. Okay. And Philomena's story, is, is she um, from a breeder as well? She's also from a breeder as well. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, do you want to mention her paw and what happened to it so we can educate people about yeah. that? Yeah, so I'll take her out and she can sit on my lap. Come here. Oh, come here, baby. She won't mind that at all, will nope. she? Nope. <laughs> That's the other thing about pugs. They love to be lap dogs. I believe I read they, they came from China and they used to sit on emperor's laps. That's so, what they were bred to do. Yeah. So they were bred to be pampered. <laughs> yeah. um, so she jumped off the bed just after her first birthday and injured her uh, neck and lower back. Wow. She was actually paralyzed on the left side of her body. Um, but through some rehab, she got used back. That's and uh, she wears this brace because she has permanent nerve damage. Yeah. Um, so it helps her keep her legs straight and keep her muscle mass in her arm. That's awesome. And I know you guys are doing a lot of work to strengthen the back legs and keep her yeah, in we've, good shape. She's done PT, um, the water treadmill, acupuncture, um, we do massage. Um, there's a lot of that we do just to kind of keep her in shape. And it's really a lot of the core strength is what helps the back. Okay. So it's just like people, which I had no idea, but our therapist taught us, you know, they have to have a strong core too in order to keep this stable back here. That makes sense, yeah. Well, anything else that we need to know about pugs? Oh, they're just the best breed. They just, <laughs> they're just so loving. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're just amazing. All dogs are amazing. They are. So. They are. It's like they say, everyone's dog is the best dog, yeah. right? So <laughs> no matter where you go. And, and I do know that there are a lot of good rescue groups for pugs, too. So there are. People there are, are looking. Lot. They're out there. Well, I know your walk is getting ready to start. So thank you for your time. And thanks for letting us meet you guys. Thanks for having us. <laughs> thank you. I know I say this every time, but how cute were those two pugs? Oh, they were fantastic. They're little faces. They're, they're just adorable dogs. I can see why people are smitten once they get a pug. So before we jump into our um, info about the pug, we asked, or I asked, what is a group of pugs called? And I don't know. What is a group <laughs> of pugs called? I'm sure all the pug owners are yelling at the uh, the the screen and the their their devices it's called a grumble a grumble yeah wow like a murder of crows wow yeah a flock of seagulls so a grumble of pugs <laughs> a grumble of pugs and they say it's because of the little kind of snorty noises they make you know really snorty noises yeah yeah it's sort of like me i guess I, a bunch of me is a grumble i think it's a yeah a grumble <laughs> i was gonna say i think it's a problem uh, and, I, and I think Riley could actually, um, she could probably go uh, incognito or undercover, un undercover because... Undercover pug. Yeah, she's a grumbly. She likes to make little grumbly noises. So I thought that was cool. Um, some things that we learned about the pug is that, of course, you know, the big thing is that they've got all those cute wrinkles, but those wrinkles need to be cleaned. So just like other breeds that... Um, like the Frenchie or the Bulldog, all of those wrinkles need to be cleaned. And as Nina said, she cleans them every after every time they eat. So Yeah, she said they, you know, they get food in there and you gotta make sure that gets out of there. It can go rancid. Yeah. Well, and just, you know, the moisture from Yeah. 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 So definitely wanna work on that. So um this was super cool that they were bred to have wrinkles that made a pattern on their forehead that made the Chinese symbol for prince. Like like King Prince thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Like not not the artist formerly known as just, just oh, like, okay. like a prince. That'd be kind of cool princess. too. Princess. Yeah. So um 
So for everyone who wants to Botox themselves, don't do it. <laughs> but I thought that was very interesting. Um, they've got a corkscrew tail, large bulging eyes. And one thing about those eyes is that they can get eye prolapse where the eye actually pops out. Ooh. Ooh. Uh that doesn't sound good. No. So that can happen if they're on like a choke collar or if they're squeezed around their neck. We don't we don't advocate choke collars. And For any dog. No. Um, and squeezing or holding the neck too tight. That's just where, you know, you've got to educate people like little ones Speci- who are touching your... Yeah, especially kids because, uh, you know, well, you wouldn't want someone choking you around your neck either. And dogs can get defensive. But we could, in this case, we could hurt the the dog. Yeah, yeah, so. that's 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 definitely not something you want to deal with. So, what was there was another health issue that you found when you researched? Yeah, so some research that I came up with was, and, and I didn't know this was hip dysplasia seems to be an issue with pugs. Uh, in 2010, uh, they said 64 percent of all pugs were reporting uh, hip dysplasia. Which, and it was a test group that they did. It was a test group, but that was re- that's that's a that's a high percentage. I was surprised because I thought that normally happened in larger breeds. So if you have pugs and you've experienced this, let us know. Yeah. Um, I was also surprised at how much they shed. Oh yeah, yeah. She she uh she didn't binge her words on that. She said they shed and they run the Roomba every day. Yeah, and every every research that I did, every pet parent that had a pug said. Yes, they shed a lot. So if you don't want a shedding dog, a pug is not the right dog for you. Right. Now, one of the biggest characteristics of a pug is their face. But with that comes a condition, and I'm going to let Megan pronounce this, but there com- there, there comes a, a condition that seems to be prevalent in most all dogs that have this sort of look. Yeah, so I... I didn't dare try to say it when we were talking about the Frenchie, and and I wrote it phonetically. I think it's called Braciophallic. So those are all of the um, short-nosed, kind of squished-faced breeds. So you have to be super careful in the heat, even what is kind of what people would think is moderate heat or humidity. Um, You just have to be super careful in warm weather. So like Nina said, they do all of their fun stuff, you know, inside, Um, you know, quick time outside, but when it's hot and, and, you know, think about that. If you live in a place like Georgia or Florida, anywhere in the South, you've really got to consider that. So, um, but you know, one thing is, is that this seems to be a breed for anyone. It it does, especially if you're a couch potato or you're, you work a lot. And so you're not able to get out with your dog, except for maybe on the weekends. I think you'll be perfectly fine with a pug. Yeah, um, they're happy on the couch because they're not big athletes. Um, A lot of them like to just do walks and puzzle games and play around the house. It seems like, like Nina said, they'll have their bursts of energy and then they're kind of done. But they are known as a Velcro dog. So if you are the type of person who does not want your dog by your side in your business all the time, know that because apparently apparently they are known as Velcro dogs or like Nina said, Velcro pugs. So Uh, that's that's so... uh so accurate from what I've heard and read too. And so in wrapping this up, I think the takeaways that we want to talk about is pugs are good for everybody. Uh, anybody that's looking to have a dog, unless you don't like shedding, unless you don't like shedding or you are allergic. Yes, that's true. Uh, they do come with extra things that you, you might not have to do with a different type dog, which is cleaning out the wrinkles and making sure that, you know, that their temperature stays regulated in the heat. Uh, so yeah. those are things that you, that you have to be mindful of. What else about the pugs should we wrap this up with? So they have an up to 15-year lifespan. So That's great. Yeah, yeah, so be prepared for a nice long life with your pug. Watch their weight. They can be very food motivated, but with that, you've got to watch their weight to make sure they don't become overweight. They have a big heart and a big personality. They're playful They can be mischievous and and stubborn, so training can be a little difficult, but if they are food motivated, we found that that actually makes training a little easier. Um, They should be great with kids if they're socialized well because they're a sturdy dog, Um, but with that being said, always, always make, make sure to 
teach children how to behave around all sorts of pets. Um, they're very adaptable dogs. So um, yeah, really, like you said, the only things you're going to have to really consider are cleaning those wrinkles and being very careful in the heat and the humidity. And I also found that in my research that they just don't tolerate extreme temperatures of any kind. So if you're in a milder climate, like, I don't know, San Diego, <laughs> Seattle, yeah. yeah, this might be a good breed for you. So um, definitely. And I've got a spider friend on the microphone here for anyone that's watching this little spider friend. I'm just going to ignore him for a minute. Um, the Pug Dog Club of America is a resource that you can check out. Um, they have a rescue directory. So find out if there is a rescue near you. If there's not one near you, there's hopefully one in a neighboring state. These are very popular dogs. And um, I do want to let you guys know, follow um, Philomena and Penelope at Philomena the Pug. That's their Instagram handle. They've got tons of followers. It's a great account. Riley seconds that <laughs> emotion. She's a follower. Yeah. Um, and please make sure to comment on what type of dog you have. And then, you know, sub subscribe to our channel. Um, we'd love to let you know whenever a new episode comes out. You can follow us everywhere online at Dog Nerd Show, dognerdshow.com, dognerdshow at gmail.com. So um, we look forward to learning about new breeds with y'all and helping you guys make the best decisions when thinking about adding a pet to your family. And until next time, folks, please take care, spay and neuter, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.